A patient presents to your emergency department complaining of chest pain. He is a 52-year-old male with a history of hypertension, diabetes, and hypercholesterolemia. He reports abrupt onset crushing pain to his mid-chest radiating into his left shoulder. He also reports shortness of breath, dizziness, nausea, and vomiting. His vital signs are pulse 90, blood pressure 160 over 80. You suspect he is having an MI, so you obtain an EKG. Since you already watched the lecture on identifying STEMIs, you correctly interpret this EKG as an inferior wall ST elevation MI. You give the patient nitroglycerin to try to dilate his coronary arteries and relieve his pain. Shortly thereafter, the patient becomes pale and diaphoretic. His repeat blood pressure is 80 over 50. What happened? The answer is a right ventricular MI. Inferior wall MIs are sometimes associated with infarction of the right ventricular wall as well. Let's take a look at right ventricular MIs and let's see if we can get a better understanding of what it is and how to recognize it. The inferior wall of the heart is supplied by the right coronary artery in approximately 90% of patients. So, if we occlude the distal aspect of the right coronary artery, we will get an inferior wall MI. On EKG, this will appear as ST elevations in leads 2, 3, and AVF. What happens if we occlude the right coronary artery more proximally? This will cause an infarct of the inferior wall as well as the right ventricular wall. Recognizing right ventricular MIs is very important clinically. Patients with right ventricular MIs are managed very differently than other MIs. When the right ventricle is infarcted, this causes a decrease in output from the right ventricle with a resultant decrease in preload to the left ventricle. This causes a drop in cardiac output. If these patients are now given nitroglycerin, the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava will dilate, so blood flow into the right ventricle will decrease. Now, output from the right ventricle decreases even more, preload to the left ventricle decreases even more, and cardiac output will plummet. So, blood pressure drops significantly. This is what happened to our patient. This is why patients with right ventricular MIs cannot be given nitroglycerin. In fact, sometimes they need to be given IV fluids. So, it is very important to be able to identify a patient with a right ventricular MI so you know to avoid giving nitroglycerin. Because the same blood vessel usually supplies the inferior wall and the right ventricle, whenever we see an inferior wall MI, we have to be suspicious that there is also right ventricular involvement. So, what will an inferior wall MI with a right ventricular MI look like on an EKG? We will still see the ST elevations in leads 2, 3, and AVF representing the inferior wall MI. But what about the right ventricular MI? How will that show up on EKG? Which EKG leads look at the right ventricle? The answer is that none of the standard 12 leads on an EKG look at the right ventricle. So the standard 12 lead EKG in this inferior wall MI with right ventricular MI will look exactly the same as any other inferior wall MI. There will be ST elevations in leads 2, 3, and AVF. So how do we know if we are dealing with an isolated inferior wall MI or an inferior wall MI with a right ventricular MI? The answer is we must do right-sided leads. To obtain right-sided leads, we take leads V3 and V4 from the left chest and move them over to the right chest. The limb leads stay in the same place. We now run the EKG again. Now, V3 and V4 are reading the right ventricle. They are now called V3R and V4R. We now look for ST elevations in V3R and V4R. If they are present, that signifies a right ventricular MI.
So, anytime you see ST elevations in leads 2, 3, and AVF, you should always suspect the possibility of a right ventricular MI. Do right-sided leads prior to giving the patient nitroglycerin. In summary, inferior wall MIs can sometimes be associated with right ventricular MIs. Whenever you see an inferior wall MI, always do right-sided leads to confirm this diagnosis.